In about 80% of the cases, people feel some of these symptoms. There are about 20% where people don't feel anything. They're like, eh, it didn't happen to me. They don't feel the culture shock. But I, I would say most of you here probably will to some degree. Maybe not a lot, maybe just a little. But it's very normal if it happens. How does it normally happen? Kind of think of it as a roller coaster. You know, culture shock is you know the, the beginning part of the roller coaster when you're climbing up and it's like click, 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 click. And you're like, this is great, it's gonna be great. And you get all excited for the roller coaster that's coming. Um, then you get to the top. They usually call that phase like the honeymoon period, where it's just exciting. You feel like it's kind of like summer camp here, and so much fun, and things are different, and I'm meeting new people. And then at some point, it becomes not so interesting. All those changes and differences, they start to grate. Maybe it's not so easy to get along with the people at your house. Maybe your Spanish is not coming along like you thought. Whatever it happens to be. And as you move through that first phase of, of kind of euphoria, of excitement, the next phase, they talk about either fight or flight. And that's where it just becomes a bit of a drag, where you experience some of these culture shock symptoms. If you get into it, you work hard to learn the language, to get to know your family, to get to know the people here, to get out of your comfort zone, you move to a place that we call fit, kind of where you feel like you fit in, where you come back to a normal, feeling good, normal status of, you know, how you feel normally, emotionally. And even right before you go, you have a tendency to be even more excited again. It's like, wow, I'm going home. This has been such a great experience. And what they find is that culture shock adapts even to the amount of time that you're here. So if you're here for six months, you get six months worth of culture shock. If you're here for a month, you get four weeks of culture shock. So you'll find that kind of this curve adapts to your time here. Not unusual. So how can you avoid or get out of culture shock. I guess I would say first of all that the process of cultural adaptation as well, you know, it makes it look very nice, this nice smooth curve. It's not like that at all. It's like, okay, it's for, oh, it's not so good. Oh, it's bad. I'm having a great day. I talked to the taxi driver. I can't speak Spanish today. I love my family. I hate my family. You know what I mean? So it's really up and down. It's not so linear as the other graph made it out to be. So don't be surprised if you feel like, man, you have some great days and you have some days that are just not so hot. Very common. So a couple things that you can think of as you're thinking about overcoming culture shock, and that's one is be aware and accept that it's going to happen. Most likely, it happens. And that's okay. So you know it's coming. I gave you the heads up. You're ready for it. When it comes on, you'll be like, ah, yeah, this is culture shock. I feel it. So you know that it was coming. Two, I want to focus on the benefits. What are the things that you're getting out of this experience? What are some of the things, why are you here? What are some of the things you want to get out of the experience? Spanish. What else? Culture, credit. What else? What's that? Okay, ability to adapt, become more flexible, yes. Fun, fun, you want to have fun. You want to go to the beach? You want to enjoy Costa Rica? Costa Rica's a good time. That's why a lot of people come here. So there's a lot of the real benefits. So you want to focus and stay focused on those benefits, the good things that you're going to get out of the experience. It's always something that you'll be able to point back to and say, yes, I studied in Costa Rica. It's a great experience. People will be interested in that. So the other thing is you really want to be proactive about making sure you get the most out of the experience that you can. So you want to be planning and thinking about, okay, if my family's going to go somewhere, how can I join them? How do I want to make sure that for my Spanish I get the most out of it? You want to take, take the initiative on those type of things and make sure it happens. And the last thing is not complaining. A lot of people get into, when they start getting uncomfortable, they start go, going through culture shock, they get into that space of complaining where it's kind of like the food and the program and my family and the other students, and Spanish class, and people get into a rhythm or into a space that gets stuck complaining. And if you're getting stuck complaining, you'll find that you really won't get as much out of the experience. There was this uh, quote that I really like. Um, quote. I'm gonna jump to the quote and then I'll come back to that. 
The quote on criticism, it says, while it's possible that a long-term visitor will achieve enough understanding of the host culture to be knowledgeably critical, such ability is long in coming, rarely insightful, and nearly always unappreciated by the host nationals. So if you have anything to say critical about the Costa Rican culture while you're here, keep it to yourself. 